here on BBC Radio 3. And now at six o'clock, Jazz File. Here's the distinguished American cartoonist, Robert Crum. Hello, folks. It's R. Crum here again with more sweet shellac. More 78 records from my fabulous collection. This week I have uh, arranged a program of early French jazz. Jazz before Django. Django Reinhardt, the famous gypsy guitar player, put France on the map as far as jazz is concerned. But there was jazz in France before that of all sorts of odd and eccentric attitudes that the French concepts of jazz contained. Some of it's hip and some of it's just strange, so which you will hear. So uh, we'll start out with a band called the Orchestra Musette Gigetto. Musette was a kind of accordion-led band that played for dancing in hundreds of little places in Paris and other cities. And some of them have made attempts to play some kind of what they thought of as jazz. So we'll hear, I Can't Give You Anything But Love by the Orchestra Musette Gigetto. I think this was recorded probably around 1928. Like a day, you know, down well, baby, I can't give you anything but love. was I Can't Give You Anything But Love by the orchestra Musette Gigetto. And my impression of the vocalist is that he's speaking phonetic English and has no idea what he's saying. It's also interesting, there's a Hawaiian guitar on there. It's an odd combination of instruments. Gigetto came from Italy originally, lived in Paris all his life, and was still alive in uh, Paris in the late 1990s, and was teaching music. His name was in the phone book. Next we'll hear 
a band called Jazz J.B. White playing Shoot Fox. Or maybe it's just pronounced Shoe. Shoe Fox. The French called a jazz band a jazz. So often it just says on a record label, Jazz B. White. It's a very eccentric idea of jazz. <laughs> the Jazz J.B. White playing Shoe Fox. Fox meaning foxtrot. They shortened it to Fox often in France. And th this sort of a band is obviously somewhat amateurish and probably played in a small dance place or restaurant somewhere in Paris. Probably a working class or lower middle class place. Not the big time, definitely. And they recorded for a very small record company. There were hundreds of small record companies that came and went in those days in France. I think it was before radio became big, there was still records were still important as a form of entertainment. You always find odd, strange labels that didn't last very long. So it's always interesting to looking for 78s in Paris. A few years ago, I went to visit this big record collector, and his name is Daniel Never. He's probably the foremost, the premier collector of French jazz records and the foremost expert on French jazz. And he's a kind of a pipe-smoking sort of a guy, you know, that's, you know, cardigan sweaters type. And uh, I noticed he had the, the complete output of this jazz J.B. White. They made about six records. And I said, oh, I like that, Ben. I have a couple of records by them. He said, you like them? They're terrible. They're no good. I said, really? You don't like them? He said, no, I don't, I don't care for them. Said, they're, not, they're not really playing jazz. I said, yeah, but I like them. I like that, the mood of their music. So then I said, well, if you don't like them, I'd like to buy those records from you if you don't want them. He said, no, no, I have to keep those for the collection. Next, we'll hear an orchestra called Ivan Alouche and his orchestra playing something they call Pompous Jerry. This is a much more sophisticated, cosmopolitan-sounding band that probably played in a big hotel or in some more expensive kind of place. And, and these musicians sound very hip. They're, they sound international, possibly even American. I don't know. There's nothing known about this band at all. Probably recorded in 1931, 32. <laughs> Thank you. 
was Ivan Alush and his orchestra playing Pompous Jerry. Next we'll hear Accordion Marmalade by Udor Rancorel and his orchestra, another accordion-led band, probably about 1934-35. Very interesting, completely unknown band, know nothing about them at all. And very hip trumpet player in this group, very advanced hip guy, I don't know where he's from or who he is. <laughs> Accordion Marmalade, or in French you say Accordion Marmalade, by Udor Rancorel and his orchestra. And next we'll hear the Chicago Syncopators playing something called My Gal Sal. It's not the standard American tune, My Gal Sal, it's some other tune entirely. And this features the uh, violin of Michel Varlop, who later on played with Django and other musicians and became somewhat well-known, but this is early. But he's, he's a very uh, interesting fiddle player, as you'll hear. Thank you. 
Okay, that was the Chicago Syncopators playing My Gal Sal with the Violon Hot, exécuté par Michel Varlop. That was some kind of big show band or something, that group. These type of big bands like this, if they weren't playing somewhere in Paris, the only other places for them to play in France were big expensive resorts in Nice and other places like that. I have seen old photos of these kind of bands playing in those places where they're wearing white suits and two-tone shoes and it's, it's all very posh and expensive. In a funny ironic way jazz in France was more successful with the upper classes. The lower classes didn't go to these places and didn't hear jazz. The closest they would hear to jazz would be something like that Gigetto band. The lower classes went only to the small dancing places that had accordion-led bands. Jazz was something sophisticated and international. Even in the era of Django, it was like that later on. The Germans liked Django. Even when the Nazis took over France, they kept Django. They liked him. They listened to him play. I've seen a photograph of Django surrounded by Nazi officers in their long gray leather overcoats. They liked him. And next we'll hear Wahlberg and his orchestra playing Simone et comme ça. Again, I know nothing about this group at all. It's a larger band, probably about 1932-33. <laughs> Charmante, c'est permis. Elle a des caprices de bébé et dit qu'une chose l'embête. Elle a laisse tomber. Si on est comme ça, on ne la changera pas. C'est son caractère, il n'y a rien à faire à ça. Si on est comme ça, on ne la changera pas. Elle tient ça de sa mère, elle tient ça de son papa. Wahlberg and his orchestra playing Simone et comme ça. The last thing we'll hear on this program is 
the only black band in this lineup. Uh, the reason I put this on here is because uh, this band contains some French black musicians from uh, Martinique, from the what they call the Antilles Islands, that were a French possession, still are actually. Otherwise, all the black musicians that were in France were from America, so they don't really qualify as French jazz, but some of these guys actually were French blacks, so this is Not and his Creole Orchestra. This N-O-T-T-E, I assume that's pronounced Not or Note, I don't know. And they do an American tune called Sing You Sinners, very lively, raucous, loosely arranged band that played at a special club called the Bal Blome or something like that that was featured black and white people mixing it up. So it was a specialty of this place, the Bal Blome. <laughs> Sing You Sinners by Knott and his Creole Orchestra. That's the last number for this program. And next time, the last program in this series, will feature American black string bands recorded in the 20s and 30s. This black string band tradition is not well known or remembered because it didn't fit the normal categories of blues or jazz. It was some other tradition. Some of it playing the same tunes that white people played at the same time. So next week we'll hear that. That was Robert Crumb. He'll be back at the same time, 6 o'clock, next Saturday evening. The programme is produced for Jazz File by David Perry, and Sweet Shellac is a Periscope production for BBC Radio 3. When I was 17 